Hello fellow mayors, it's great to have you back for another video from our Let's Play series, Twisted Dunes on the Oasis map. I'm your builder, New Build Cities, NBC for short, and in the last episode we built a beautiful European themed area in Modern City Commercial Plaza. Now I'd like to create an immersive education center around a high school and elementary school, as well as continue the European, European suburban mix theme we have on the outskirts of our city in this area. I've already picked out some potential assets to use for this school area, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and make some room by moving the assets out of the way, and we'll go ahead and lay down a district as well. We'll go ahead and set Emerson District to European for the European high density. It's going to be a really nice building. And then we'll do the surrounding area as European suburbia. And we'll do a little bit of zoning. And the buildings are coming in nicely. While I wait for those buildings to come in like I want them to, let's go ahead and do some training and set up for this school area. We do have some substantial elevation difference between Emerson District and the mountain. So I want to kind of start tapering up the land. But I also want the school complex to be level. So it's going to be a little bit tough. But I think we can handle the, the elevation changes. Earlier, I already moved over to the campus DLC zoning. I think I like to use some of those university campus buildings mixed in with our brick building, high school, and the elementary school to kind of create this area. I think it's going to turn out really nice. I think the education complex is a little too far back, so I'm going to go ahead and move it up to the next road. And if you haven't guessed it already, what I'm doing with the concrete four lane road is the, the four lane road trick. If you're a fan of the channel, you've seen me do it probably many times. It helps you place an asset down and then you shrink it back down to a two lane road. Giving you that one block of space between the asset and the actual road allows you to take advantage of some detailing props and some fencing and stuff to be able to place that in front of the building. It's looking pretty good so far. I like the brick theme. Stars in my 
I'm gonna do the same trick with the library. Move it back one to move the road back. I couldn't do the four lane road trick because of the other campus building in the way, but I was able to just put a two lane road down, move it up one, and then put the, put the asset down, put it back. And it's looking nice. I think it's looking really good so far. I like it. The only thing I wish we could do is build like a custom baseball field. I have seen someone do some really cool things with that. They used a key from like the Piers content creator pack. They used the one that like extends out pretty far. It's like, ah, I probably want to say like three or four like little steps. And they kind of use that as bleachers. They sunk that into the ground. That looked pretty cool. Build a little baseball field. It's just tough on console because you don't have a lot of assets to play with. Now, if you're on PC, there's all kinds of stuff on the workshop. Probably even just custom baseball fields as well as building your own. Wow, I'm really liking how it looks. Let's go ahead and change out the road to road with trees, add some fencing, and maybe do a little bit of detailing. And as you can see when I'm placing the natural reserve fence, the advantage of having that extra gap. It just looks cool to have the fencing in front of the buildings. You can see it as well with, with the library. It has the illusion of creating a walkway, which is pretty cool. And now here between the high school and the library, I like to have like the fences really close together. Like you walk in between the fences, which is difficult on console, at least it tries to snap. So what we're gonna do here is actually remove the path, remove the existing fencing. And anytime you wanna do a really tight piece of fencing work, start with the short pieces first. I call them the anchor pieces. So we're gonna draw like a little anchor piece between the two buildings. And sometimes it can be really fickle, but you know, we we'll just do the best we can with it. And you can see when I run the piece of fencing along the library that it wants to snap to the piece as it's along the, the high school. But since I did the little two pieces first, I can break its desire to snap to the other fence by having it snap to the small anchor piece instead. And now that we've created that box, we can just break off the, the small pieces and give ourselves the gap. We're going to put our path back. I <laughs> covered up the little gap with a little light. Love it. Gonna put down some flower planters.
and if anything, everything's looking really nice around this fountain. Let's go ahead and do some similar work around the library. I really like how the palm trees look around the library. Let's go ahead and change the trees on the road to a different tree. And wow, I really like how our education area turned out. It looks really gorgeous. Let's go ahead and do some terrain work and set up the road layout. We got quite a bit of elevation here, so we're gonna have a kind of a tiered effect. And on top of these flat tiers, we'll go ahead and add some of the high density European buildings. And then around those will be the light density European suburbia. And it's gonna look really nice. And I placed all those squares in different areas somewhat randomly and that way it breaks up any patterns and encourages me to build a little bit more organic road layout. And, I, you know, you might be asking, like, oh, how are you just picking where your roads are going to go? And I have no idea where the roads are going to go. I just look at the terrain. And it's, like it's, like it's, like it's like being a terrain whisperer. It just speaks to me sometimes, and I just follow along. I said, I look at the different slopes, different features of the terrain, and try and shape my roads around it if I can. And it helps create some organic looks to it. And, of course, we're using the dirt roads, though. Like a lot of times I'll just do a bunch of roads. I'll zoom out just to get like a wider perspective of how the roads look. And if I don't like a section, I'll just bring out the bulldozer to completely destroy it. Maybe mess with the train a little bit more with the train tools and then try again. 
I mean, as you can see, I'm using mainly the freeform tool. It does a really good job of creating these nice curved roads. And it is a tough tool to kind of get get the hang of. But once you do it, it just clicks and it's, it just seems so easy. I don't know. It's just weird. And Linden District is looking pretty good. I'm liking the road layout. And ta-da! <laughs> the power of editing. It's all filled in. Hooray! <laughs> well, all I did was zone some stuff, plant some trees, the usual. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and see how it turned out. And we have this beautiful high-density residential area right in front of the educational complex. I really like how our European suburbia light density winds up into the hillside. And you can see I added a covered bridge with some rocks underneath. Looking pretty sharp. I like how the high density European buildings kind of pop out, but then there's a bunch of light density around it. I went ahead and redid the four lane European road we had here. It's now a bridge over a bunch of rocks. I did a nice little trick where you lower the land, place your rocks, then you raise the land back up. It allows you to adjust the height. You can actually put the rocks in the road if you want to, but Obviously, <laughs> I want the cars to look a little bit more realistic, so the rocks are just below. And we have some really nice pathing, some from our park, as well as some from the, the first tile area. Got a mix of the European and American style paths. When you intermix them, it creates these really big, huge pillars that I just, I just love. As we come down the main boulevard into the high density European area, I just want to point out how it looks when you don't zone on the main road on the left side where the residents are like tucked off there's like a, a line of trees and some fencing kind of creates like a secluded area looks really nice you can see our pathing going over the main road kind of swooping into our train station and here i use the university city light density commercial to create like a strip mall kind of goes with our high density modern city buildings and we got a couple parking lots from the local produce as well as a couple plazas. It's very similar to the last build we did with the high density European area. Just create a nice plaza area with some parking and a couple big buildings on the sides and then like the train station kind of in the middle. This looks really nice. Across the waterway we, we continue the same theme. Just have really a few high density buildings in here mostly like density residential. I went ahead and created a sunken train line just a little small section of it just to add a little flavor to the area. Then our residents kind of go up into the hill and the buildings get smaller and smaller. Almost like little cabins in the hill kind of look. And it's looking really nice. And let's just take a look and see how it, it all blends into the area we built last episode. I think it looks really, really good. We have a lot of high density European residential right in the forefront. But that thins out and light density kind of takes over as we get towards the edge of the map. So that looks good. Well, I think that'll wrap this one up. It was great having along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed building it. And if you did, please leave a like. It always helps support and grow the channel. As well as I'd love for you to be a subscriber and become a member of my family. I wish you the best and brightest success in your cities. And as always, happy building.